Let's get some more on all of this uh, with Democratic Senator Chris Coons of Delaware. Senator, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to get to the climate summit in a moment. But first, uh, you heard the president saying Senator Joe Manchin, in the president's words, will be there on his economic plan. But, but how do you get there? Because Manchin is raising serious issues with Medicare expansion. He's waiting for the Congressional Budget Office score, as they call it. It doesn't sound like he's backing this plan anytime soon. Well, Wolf, the good news from this week was that the Congressional Progressive Caucus in the House uh, has decided to move forward, uh, both with the infrastructure bill and with the Build Back Better bill, saying that they trust President Biden will be able to deliver 50 votes here in the Senate, and I share that confidence. Um, I have heard, as have all of us from Senator Manchin, that he wants to see final text. He wants to know the details of the deal. But that's not unusual, Wolf, for a senator to say, before I'm finally going to vote for something where I agree with the overall plan, I need to see the final details. Um, there was, uh, I think, a breakthrough agreement this afternoon on adding a prescription drug negotiation uh, provision, a provision that would lower out-of-pocket costs for prescription drugs for American seniors. Um, which I frankly think in terms of um, getting 50 votes in the Senate strengthens the bill moving forward. Frustration, though, is clearly mounting over Senator Manchin, so uh, what his critics are calling stalling. Uh, one Democratic senator told CNN, uh, and I'm quoting now, there's a ton of loose ends and no clear way out. Is the feeling that uh, one senator, Senator Manchin specifically, is dictating President Biden's success or failure on this critically important issue? Well, if we've got 50 senators, any one of us, because we only have a 50 vote majority, uh, could throw up a red flag and disagree and slow the progress of the Build Back Better bill. Um, it is not an infinite number of concerns. It's a very defined and narrow number of concerns that Senator Manchin has raised in recent days. And the White House is working through resolving all of them with, with him. Uh, and I am optimistic that we will get there. Uh, when the House uh, takes up and passes this bill, there will be a week um, that it goes through a review, a scrub here in the Senate to make sure that it follows with this arcane process called reconciliation that we're following and then we'll be ready to vote for it. Uh, once President Biden returns and has a chance to be directly engaged, constructively as he has been, I'm confident that we will in the end get 50 Democrats to vote for this bill. Yeah, this is going to be his major priority once he lands outside of Washington at Joint Base Andrews. Uh, turning to the uh, COP26 uh, climate summit here, here in Scotland, uh, President Biden blasted China and Russia, for that matter, for not engaging, not sending their leaders here, calling it a big mistake. Uh, how does he put pressure on some of the world's biggest polluters to act? Uh, and I know you'll be leading a congressional delegation uh, to uh, Glasgow uh, coming up. Uh, that's right, Wolf. Uh, President Biden had very strong words uh, for some of the world's largest polluters, uh, China and Russia, uh, but also engaged in positive bilateral meetings uh, with heads of state from other countries that are also significant contributors, not at the scale of China. Uh, and I think he made two big announcements today. A number of leaders of COP26 made two big announcements today about a global methane pledge. Uh, methane is a far more significant polluter contributor to global warming than carbon dioxide. It stays in the atmosphere a shorter period of time, but it's a much heavier molecule in terms of its impact. Uh, and the United States is making a significant commitment and catalyzing a global commitment to combat methane emissions. There's also a new commitment to end deforestation. Uh, I chair the subcommittee that funds all of our foreign assistance, as you know, Wolf, and I'm committed to working closely with President Biden to make sure that we meet the bold commitments that he's made at COP26 for climate finance, particularly to help developing countries that want to work with us to reduce their emissions. Before I let you go, Senator, uh, you heard President Biden say uh, he thinks Democrats are going to win the Virginia governor's race. What will it say, though, if he's wrong? Well, look, there's a lot of elections across the country tonight. Um, there's governors who are up for election in both Virginia and New Jersey. Uh, I'll be looking at the exit polls for lessons that we might learn going forward. Uh, but the 2024 election is a long way off. The 22 election is a year off. 
Um, I don't think we should read too much into these polls. Um, Youngkin and McAuliffe are both running uh, hard right up to the end. It's going to be a close election. And what I think it will mean is that there's a lot of folks around the country uh, who are looking for a path forward out of this pandemic. Um, I like Terry McAuliffe's chances as the former governor who had a strong record when he was governor of Virginia. And I'll be looking forward to seeing the results on CNN later tonight. We all will uh, be anxious to see what, what goes on there. Senator Chris Coons, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.